Tomb Lovers, what is up? So, we're going to react to a video called The Most Beautiful Way to Stop a Bully I've Ever Seen. Um, I've heard of this video a while back. Never really saw it. But, it's supposed to be a good thing. Um, let's check it out. Things. So many of you. Oh. When I was a kid, I hid my heart under the bed because my mother said, if you're not careful, someday someone's going to break it. Take it from me, under the bed is not a good hiding spot. I know because I've been shot down so many times, I get altitude sickness just from standing up for myself. But that's what we were told. Stand up for yourself. That's hard to do if you don't know who you are. We were expected to define ourselves at such an early age. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't do it, others did it for us. Geek, fatty, slut, bag. And at the same time we were being told what we were, we were being asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? I always thought that was an unfair question. It presupposes that we can't be what we were already are. We were kids. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a man. I wanted a registered retirement savings plan that would keep me in candy long enough to make old age sweet. When I was a kid, I wanted to shave. Now, not so much. When I was eight, I wanted to be a marine biologist. When I was nine, I saw the movie Jaws and thought to myself, no thank you. When I was 10, I was told that my parents left because they didn't want me. When I was 11, I wanted to be left alone. When I was 12, I wanted to die. When I was 13, I wanted to kill a kid. When I was 14, I was asked to seriously consider a career path. I said, I'd like to be a writer. And they said, choose something realistic. So I said, professional wrestler. And they said, don't be stupid. See, they asked me what I wanted to be and told me what not to be. And I wasn't the only one. We were being told that we somehow must become what we are not, sacrificing what we are to inherit the masquerade of what we will be. I was being told to accept the identity that others will give me. And I wonder what made my dreams so easy to dismiss. Granted, my dreams are shy because they're Canadian. My dreams are self-conscious and overly apologetic. They're standing alone at the high school dance. They've never been kissed. See, my dreams got called names too. Silly, foolish, impossible. But I kept dreaming. I was gonna be a wrestler. I had it all figured out. I was gonna be the garbage man. My finishing move was gonna be the trash compactor. My saying was gonna be, I'm taking out the trash. The and then this guy, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, stole my entire shtick. I was crushed, as if by a trash compactor. <laughs> I thought to myself, what now? Where do I turn? Poetry. Like a boomerang, the thing I loved came back to me. One of the first lines of poetry I can remember writing was in response to a world that demanded I hate myself. From age 15 to 18, I hated myself for becoming the thing that I loathed, a bully. When I was 19, I wrote, I will love myself despite the ease with which I lean toward the opposite. Standing up for yourself doesn't have to mean embracing violence. When I was a kid, traded in homework assignments for friendship, then gave each friend a late slip for never showing up on time, and in most cases, not at all. I gave myself a hall pass to get through each broken promise. And I remember this plan born out of frustration from a kid who kept calling me Yogi, then pointed my tummy and said, too many picnic baskets. Turns out it's not that hard to trick someone. And one day before class, I said, yeah, you can copy my homework. And I gave him all the wrong answers that I'd written down the night before. 
He got his paper back expecting a near-perfect score and couldn't believe it when he looked across the room at me and held up a zero. I knew I didn't have to hold up my paper of 28 out of 30, but my satisfaction was complete when he looked at me puzzled and I thought to myself, smarter than the average bear, motherfucker. This is my move, actually. Very smart. This is who I am. This is how I stand up for myself. When I was a kid, I used to think that pork chops and karate chops were the same thing. I thought they were both pork chops. And because my grandmother thought it was cute and because they were my favorite, she let me keep doing it. Not really a big deal. One day, before I realized fat kids are not designed to climb trees, I fell out of a tree and bruised the right side of my body. I didn't want to tell my grandmother about it because I was scared I'd get in trouble for playing somewhere I shouldn't have been. A few days later, the gym teacher noticed the bruise and I got sent to the principal's office. Mm -hmm. From there, I was sent to another small room with a really nice lady who asked me all kinds of questions about my life at home. I saw no reason to lie. As far as I was concerned, life was pretty good. I told her whenever I'm sad, my grandmother gives me karate chops. Oh, <laughs> that didn't go This led to a full-scale investigation, and I was removed from the house for three days. So they finally decided to ask how I got the bruises. News of this silly little story quickly spread through the school, and I earned my first nickname: Pork Chop. Pork Chop. To this day, as if that wasn't obvious. I hate pork chops. I'm not the only kid who grew up this way. Surrounded by people who used to say that rhyme about sticks and stones. As if broken bones hurt more than the names we got called, we got called them all. So we grew up believing no one would ever fall in love with us, that we'd be lonely forever, that we'd never meet someone to make us feel like the sun was something they built for us in their tool shed. So broken heartstrings bled the blues and we tried to empty ourselves so we'd feel nothing. Don't tell me that hurts less than a broken bone. That an ingrown life is something surgeons can cut away, that there's no way for it to metastasize, it does. She was eight years old, our first day of grade three when she got called ugly. We both got moved to the back of class so we'd stop getting bombarded by spitballs. But the school halls were a battleground. We found ourselves a number day after wretched day. We used to stay inside for recess because outside was worse. Outside, we'd have to rehearse running away or learn to stay still like statues and give you no clues that we were there in grade five. They taped a sign to the front of her desk that read, Beware of Dog. To this day, Despite a loving husband, she doesn't think she's beautiful because of a birthmark that takes up less than half her face. Kids used to say she looks like a wrong answer that someone tried to erase but couldn't quite get the job done. And they'll never understand that she's raising two kids whose definition of beauty begins with the word mom. Because they see her heart before they see her skin because they'll never always been amazing. He was a broken branch grafted onto a different family tree. Adopted. Not because his parents opted for a different destiny. He was three when we gave him a mixed drink of one part left alone and two parts tragedy. Started therapy in eighth grade. Had a personality made up of tests and pills. Lived like the uphills were mountains and the downhills were cliffs. Four-fifths suicidal, a tidal wave of antidepressants and an adolescent being called Popper. One part because of the pills, 99 parts because of the cruelty. He tried to kill himself in grade 10 when a kid who could still go home to mom and dad had the audacity to tell him, get over it. As if depression is something that can be remedied by any of the contents found in a first aid kit. To this day, he has a stick of TNT lit from both ends, could describe to in detail the way the sky bends in a moment before it's about to fall. And despite an army of friends who all call him an inspiration, he remains a conversation piece between people who can't understand. Sometimes being drug-free has less to do with addiction and more to do with sanity. We weren't the only kids who grew up this way. To this day, kids are still being called names. Mm -hmm. The classics were, he's stupid, he's spaz. Seems like every school has an arsenal of names getting updated every year. And if a kid breaks into school and no one around chooses to hear, do they make a sound? Uh, they're just background noise from a soundtrack stuck on repeat when people say things like, kids can be cruel. 
every Three movie school kids. was a big top circus tent. And the pecking order went from acrobats to lion tamers, from clowns to carnies, all of these miles ahead of who we were. We were freaks. Lobster claw boys and bearded ladies. Oddities, juggling depression and loneliness, playing solitaire, spin the bottle, trying to kiss the wounded parts of ourselves and heal. But at night, while the others slept, we kept walking the tightrope. It was practice. And yes, some of us fell. But I want to tell them that all of this is just debris left over when we finally decide to smash all the things we thought we used to be. And if you can't see anything beautiful about yourself, get a better mirror. Look a little closer. Stare a little longer. Because there's something inside you that made you keep trying despite everyone who told you to quit. You built a cast around your broken heart and signed it yourself. You signed it. They were wrong. Because maybe you didn't belong to a group or a clique. Maybe they decided to pick you last for basketball or everything. Maybe you used to bring bruises and broken teeth to show and tell but never told. Because how can you hold your ground if everyone around you wants to bury you beneath it? You have to believe that they were wrong. They have to be wrong. Why else would we still be here? We grew up learning to cheer on the underdog because we see ourselves in them. We stem from a root planted in the belief that we are not what we were called. We are not abandoned cars stalled out and sitting empty on some highway. And if in some way we are, don't worry, we only got out to walk and get gas. We are graduating members from the class that we made it. Not the faded echoes of voices crying out names will never hurt me. Of course, they did. But our lives will only ever always continue to be a balancing act that has less to do with pain more to do with beauty. Mm. Well, do this video is like it's it's Legit, man. I mean, serious shit. Um, I'm sure everybody's been bullied, or everyone. Some people were bullies. Um, when I was in school, I, I don't like bullies at all, man. If you're gonna bully somebody, I don't give a fuck if it's a kid. I don't give a fuck if it's an adult, or you're just some person on the street bullying someone else, dude. I'm going to intervene. That's who I am at heart. I've been bullied. I know what it's like to deal with someone who is a bully. It's it's hard and it can be fucking difficult and some people do not have that strength. I mean, some people will cut themselves, some people will fucking take their own lives over fucking bullying. I mean, for me, words are words. I mean, you can say what you want. To me, you can fucking be racist against me. You can call me whatever the fuck. I, I, his words to me. I mean, but you're talking about. I can. I'm stronger in a sense for that. That I can. Shrug it off when someone uses mean words or fucking rude to me or whatever. But there's people that don't have that strength. They go home every day carrying such a burden and such pain in their heart that no one fucking sees it. There was a girl when I was young. I don't remember how old, like probably fucking kindergarten or something, shit like that, first grade. And her parents literally set her on fire. I don't know why to this, I, I don't know why. I, I mean, we didn't have fucking Facebook and bullshit back then. But her parents set her on fire, and she was like pretty much 95% of her body was burned. Her ears were melted to her skin. She just, it, it's a miracle she survived it and was still able to come to school. And there were kids, kids there that would actually bully her for, for the way she is, which wasn't even her choice. That was not her decision for her parents to burn her. I mean, how could you do that to your child in the first place? 
That's your fucking blood. That's your fucking... That came from you. How can you do that to them? And the bullying was obnoxious. And I got actually suspended for standing up for her. I shoved them in a pool that had a tarp. They could have drowned. I wouldn't give two fucks. You don't treat somebody like that. I don't care. I honestly hope to this day she's alive and she's fucking doing, you know, living her life just fine. And she has people in her life that are standing up for her as as friends. I mean, I've I've lived the bully life. When I was young, I had to deal with it too. Two different schools from fucking I don't know, second grade to second grade I had one and I just I was done. And it was the bully that, oh, we, you give me your money and I'll protect you from everyone else when you don't even realize that's the person who actually is the bully, so he doesn't protect you. And I lost it. One day I fucking just stabbed him in the head with a fucking sh a brand new sharpened pencil, like, just no whole bar, just, like, right into the fucking top of his head. He got expelled and survived, but I wouldn't have cared if I killed him. Why would you care over someone who treats you like shit. I mean, if you're if you're being bullied, get help. I mean, teachers don't have any real ability to actually help. And this is a big, actually one of the big subjects of mine that I hate having happen to people because it's just, it never gets, it really never gets fixed. More often than not, the bullies are coming from a broken home where they pick on others to lower their self-esteem or, you know, lower the person's self-esteem and raise theirs. And it's just, you solve nothing. You, all you're doing is creating an issue. And then when the person the bully is messing with finally just fucking loses their mind and, like, literally almost kills the bully, he's like, wow, I didn't see that happening. Well, yeah, you've been fucking with this person for, what, a couple years? Of course, when he snaps or she snaps, they're going to fuck you up to a point where you're going to become a fucking person that gets bullied in the school because you just turn into a bitch. Most bullies will bully until the confrontation gets too high and then gets out of control. And then they, they're fucking just honestly surprised. And then we hold no account for the people's lives that are taken. Literally, um, I know about the Amanda Todd thing. I know that she was cyber bullied a lot. And she, she was a beautiful girl. She really was. But I don't, I don't care that she sent naked pictures of herself to the boyfriend she sent. I've... I've had girlfriends who've sent me naked pictures, but it takes a total fucking, you know, piece of shit douchebag to bully and bully and bully to the point that she lost, she took her own fucking life. And, oh my god, if I was actually, a, if I was her friend back then, I would hope I could have helped change it, but no, you bully and I am around to see it, we're going to have fucking issues. And I'm not going to back down. I've picked up the phone from girls that their ex-boyfriends or some guy was bullying them and yelling at them for no fucking bullshit. They weren't even together. And you can best bet I'll get my fucking attitude on. I don't play. You bully, I'm going to fuck with you right back. I don't play. I hate seeing people get fucking bullied for no reason. There's no reason to bully. There really is fucking not. And the other one that happened to me was in junior high, bullied by a kid named Sparky. Little skinny toothpick of a kid. Actually, I had been bullied three times, but, um... Sparky was later, and the final straw that made me lose my shit was him pretty much just jumping me at a uh, bus stop on the way, waiting for the bus to come to go to school. I pretty much threatened him after he j hit me in the jaw. I told him, either get back in his car, or if he throws another punch, 
I will knock him on his ass and run over his own fucking body with his car. And fucking just drive over his body six fucking times. I don't like being bullied. You fuck with me, I'm going to fuck with you back. The other one was when I didn't really still know how to deal with bullies. I didn't know how to fight, defend myself. And this one kid kept calling me Payless because I got my shoes to Payless, which, you know, that's just a stupid, another stupid fucking reason to bully. It doesn't matter where people get their clothes. I mean, fuck. We all bleed the same color. We're all living a life where we never, we don't get out of this life alive in the end. We're all fucking going to die one day. But there's no reason to bully. And the kid bullied me and called me Payless a lot. Until my friend Robert almost nearly beat him to death with a fucking scooter in his hand. Yeah, I that shit. And now I just fucking stand up to anyone who's a bully. I'm, my cousin and I used to wail on each other. He's in the army. I can't stand bullying. And I will always defend someone who's being bullied. I don't care. I don't care size, weight, race, sex. None of that shit matters to me. When you're bullying someone, I got an issue with you. But this guy's video, it's it'll be in the link in the description below. But dude, if you see a bully, stop it because you could save someone's life. And I just can't understand how some people get away with not going to jail for causing people to kill themselves. That makes no fucking sense to me. It really doesn't. So if you guys see someone getting bullied, stop it. I don't care what the fuck you do. Knock that fucker out. I don't care if you choke slam him, RKO his ass. I don't care. You see someone bullying anybody, you stop it. Because imagine if that's your child and they are being bullied to the point that you don't even know they want to commit suicide. Could you live with the fact that your kid was getting bullied and you didn't help in any way, shape, or form? And you didn't know your kid wanted to commit suicide, and then they commit suicide, and you f figure out that they were being bullied. I mean, that's your, it's your life, it's your kid's life. Get involved. Trust me. I'm going to teach my kid to defend themselves. And if I find out my kid was ever bullying, I'm going to give him a fucking whooping. But bullying is unacceptable in any fucking situation. I do not care. So, this is the end of my video. My little rant for it, but just stop bullying, and if you see people bullying, intervene and stop it. That's all you gotta do, because you can save a life that way. You really can. You guys have a good day. Enjoy the night. I got two or three more videos coming up. Just stay safe and, you know, be strong. Anyone that's out there being bullied, feel free to talk to me. Um... I'll leave my Facebook in the description below as well, but stay strong, y'all. Peace out.